Dude, it's so good to see you. How are you? You're my first, by the way, wow. since everything ended and, and I, we're back and I'm like, Chris Pine, it has to be that way. <laughs> um, great job, Thanks, as man. always. Thank you. I forgot about Into the Woods when you sang because you, I, I looked at everybody and I said, my boy can sing. Good job. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Was it intimidating or was it? Yeah, it was super intimidating. I mean, anytime I do, anytime you do something that's not your forte and you're going up against Ariana, you're going up against Victor, you know, you're, you're in with these people that have done this a lot and really well and been well received for it and to sing Julia and Ben's music and yeah, it was, uh, I prepped and studied and did my homework and tried to put my best foot forward, you know? But I remember, like, Into the Woods, we talked about that, too. And I'm like, okay, he could do it. This yeah, is great. Yeah. All right, King Magnifico, your character, he's the villain. That's no secret. What's his deal? <laughs> I think, like every bad guy, he's got deep insecurities. And uh, as his villain song shows, he just wants to be loved. It's like he just doesn't understand why. Not everybody loves him. He's in major need of uh, being validated and uh, a, a need that he sets on his poor wife until she realizes he's a complete waste of time. So, uh, yeah, he's a, an inflated ego, kind of substanceless sort of dude. Would you hang out with him? Like, what if he was your next door neighbor? Yeah, sure. I'd probably go to his parties and then, you know, okay. quickly leave. Don't have to hang out with him too much, but can drink his free, free beer. And I love that we just got giggles in the room <laughs> <laughs> from that question. All right, uh, these movies last for generations. I mean, people will talk about this film, especially the fact that it is a love letter to Disney. Um, what kind of reaction do you get, do you feel, when you know you're part of that legacy? Because th this is a film that will be around for a long time. Um, well, I, you know, I haven't seen it with an audience yet, so I'm dying to see it with, uh, from what people have told me, the reaction was really communal, which, uh, you know, like when I saw Dungeons and Dragons for the first time, it was exactly that. It felt like you were at a party and it reminded me of, you know, there are a lot of different ways to get entertainment now. There are a lot of different screens and I am old fashioned and <laughs> I can see as you get older, change is really hard. I'm experiencing it like firsthand, but uh, I like the movie theater. I like being in a place where you can feel the energy of people feeling the same thing at the same time and sharing that. So. That's what I'm excited about with this film. I got to screen it here on the Disney lot. I should point out we're in Burbank right now at the Disney Studios. And you're right, the communal, especially the Disney fans. And there's so many Easter eggs and so many things that did, you know, Disney in it. All right, we're going to close with this, man. Besides Wish, obviously, what's your favorite, like, Disney movie? Uh, it's really too hard. They're all over the place. I mean, my first crush was Ariel and Little Mermaid, and then Fantasia, I think, is a, this incredible surrealist work of art. Um, um, uh, uh, I mean, I love The Jungle Book and Mowgli, and um, I'm a 90s, 80s, 90s kid, so The Lion King. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Pinocchio. Sure. I mean, I've, I've, we've all seen all of them, I think. And now we have Wish, yeah. and you're a part of it. Dude, yeah. good job. Really good to see you, man. Yeah, you I too, am man. really just stoked to see you. I'm like, yes! <laughs> Only on the Backstage Experience.